Hey guys, we are on to experiment 9 and um, this one was um, definitely some new material for me uh, diving into uh, capacitors and um, basically how they how they work and how they relate to time and uh, just to start right out the gate and say this uh, this part took a little bit for my brain to understand um, and that was let me put these leads down uh, that was that current does not flow through a capacitor at least not in the perfect sense uh, there may be a little leakage according to the book but in a practical world nothing uh, no current flows through this component now that is very different in my mind than everything I've dealt with thus far when you have a circuit with a resistor and a switch things like that the current flows through the resistor, albeit limited by the value of the, of the resistor, and it flows through the switch if the switch is pushed in this case, or does not flow through the switch if the switch is not pushed. But again, it does not flow through the capacitor. Um, what ends up happening, we're going to actually just briefly dive into, uh, or think about things in an electron flow mode instead. Um, this side of the circuit right now is the uh, the ground side and this is the positive side in terms of this uh, the leads on the capacitor or negative and positive sides um, but what I wanted to mention was um, in electron flow mode we know for a fact hey the electrons are actually flowing from the negative lead out through the ground bus, through the adapter and back, through the positive lead here, um, and then it would like travel all the way, grab a pen here, it would travel all the way back um, down this power bus line, the, the positive side, through the switch, through the resistor, into this lead of the capacitor. So what's happening is, is internally to the capacitor, from what I've learned, there are um, like a couple, you know, metal plates that are, uh, you know, not touching. And the whole point of this capacitor is to really store, uh, really store, a uh, a charge um, that is kind of like a voltage potential um, between the plates. So you're really kind of having this buildup of electrons on one plate. Um, and you know a lack of them on the other and so kind of like in a normal battery sense once you then use the battery the goal is hey all these electrons that are built up on one of the plates they want to leave that area and flow to where you know there's more space to breathe per se uh, further away from other electrons so in this setup we have our 12 volt um, AC adapter, again assuming it doesn't uh, explode on us, uh, that will be powering um, uh, current through, um, you know, through technically through the negative lead, but we'll go back to traditional in this in this uh, in this instance. So, um, and actually, just as a quick segue, I think I figured out what was going on with the AC adapter from the last experiment. So, what I was actually smelling was uh, ozone, I believe, um, and from kind of you know looking back at what I was doing in the last experiment, nothing was uh, circuit-wise wrong. Everything was working correctly. But I think what was going on was um, that quick toggling of hey I I have a current draw, hey I don't like of that relay. I think it was taxing the um, the AC adapter because um, it's very quickly requesting different amount or drawing different amounts of current. And um, I think that that might come down to the quality of the adapter. And in my case, this one was just belt in China. And, you know, for all I know, they've, you know, used, you know, animals inside there and not actual circuitry. Who knows? So, um, yeah, I'm going to kind of blame that on a uh, demanding uh, circuit that was, you know, oh, I want current. Oh, I don't. Combined with crappy hardware. So, assuming 
all future builds don't um, tax it to that extent. Like this one is a little bit more normal. There isn't a relay going on and off, on and off, on and off really quickly. Um, I think it will hopefully live on to see another day. So bearing that in mind, back to this guy. Our goal is to observe the behavior when we push the button down to connect this circuit. Speaking of which, I should probably turn the power strip on. Um, so what's going to happen is we are going to measure the voltage of this capacitor, which really is, again, the buildup of the pressure difference, if you will, between the electrons on one side of this thing and the electrons on the other. And we're going to see what happens when we use our, uh, this is a 100K resistor here, I have a 50K on standby, and I have a um, just a little 100 ohm uh, resistor that I will use to discharge the capacitor between test cases. So, I got my, got my multimeter in uh, direct voltage, uh, direct current voltage mode, and we are going to measure what happens uh, when we put the leads on both sides of the capacitor. And notice, uh, this is going to start out really low, I believe. See, 0 0.040. So that is almost no voltage whatsoever. Okay. So, what I will try to do is hold this here. And I'm going to push the button and hold the button in. So we are gaining voltage in this capacitor. And the idea is, is the longer you hold this, it would basically be trying to uh, accrue up to 12 volts of charge to match the supply. So in theory, eventually, this would basically be uh, at equilibrium with the power source. In our case, we kind of just, you know, took our finger off at some random time, 1.4 volts. And likewise, this, this uh, resistor over here, um, the voltage drop across the resistor, you know, summed with the voltage measured in the uh, capacitor will equal the total voltage of the power source. So if we have 12 volts and 1.4 of them roughly are like, you know, being used here, the other is being used here. So in theory, like, we have an inverse relationship, but the voltage drop against this resistor will be uh, decreasing as the voltage um, in this capacitor is increasing. And another thing to note um, from what I was reading is that the ch the, the rate at which this capacitor will um, reach 12 volts is kind of a logarithmic um, curve. So it's not linear. It will not happen in a constant amount of time. It's one where, uh, you know, it will, uh, it kind of looks like a curve, like, like, you know, if we were to look at a curve, a logarithmic curve, it's like, ooh, making huge gains, huge gains, huge gains, or smaller, 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 smaller. So it's like an infinity curve, you know? It's gradually approaching zero. So it'll take a very long time, and, and in theory, it should never fully reach 12 volts, but approach it ever so slightly. So let's try that one more time. I'm going to just put that on there a little longer. So we're gradually, gradually storing more and more voltage. If I could hold the contact. <laughs> Sorry, this is kind of hard. There we go. So, yep, it's just gradually building up that potential charge in that capacitor, transferring electrons from one side to the other. And so it, we have about 3.7 volts 
in that capacitor right now. So if we were to, and I'm going to put these on the inside of this guy, easier to hold this with one hand. Watch what the voltage drop across the resistor is. See that? 9.4, 9.3, 9.2, 9.1. So the voltage drop is gradually disappearing. So when this gets to 8, that means that we roughly have like 4 volts, like right there. We should have roughly like 4 to 4.5 volts, depending on the exact voltage from our power source in this capacitor. Oh, a little bit more, because yeah, I guess our, our uh, power supply is actually probably giving us more like instead of 12 volts it's probably like 13 and change so um, but as you see this resistor will eventually mean nothing like to this circuit as it as it gradually approaches uh, you know the 13 volts or whatever it's, it's trying to uh, store um, I think that pretty much covers it so we kind of had a feel for how fast it was charging using this 100k uh, resistor and so if we want to try it with a lower uh, resistor like this 50k what I'm first going to do is with one hand <laughs> I was a little resistant to uh, try this at first but um, I guess it's logical if I have only one hand holding this uh, 100 ohm resistor and I'm trying to discharge this capacitor um, I'm not like at risk for shock because I'm not like creating a complete circuit um, with the capacitor. Now if I were, so what I'm trying to do is I'm going to like just touch both leads of this capacitor to let the charge discharge through the resistor. So we're creating not really a short because thankfully there is a resistor here in place but like if this was just a straight up wire this would probably be a bad idea. This would be like trying to short a regular battery. So um, anyways let me go ahead and do this, and given how much voltage is on this guy, he'll probably need to just be in contact for a few seconds, and we'll see. Now, of course, the only thought that came to my mind as I was doing this was, depending on how, how, much, um, how much voltage was there, and how weak or strong the resistor is, it's possible that like this guy could heat up and maybe, you know, I'll burn your fingers or something. But um, I kind of just did what the book recommended in this case and these seem to work out okay. This doesn't feel warm at all. So let's just quickly double check that I held it on long enough and I had a good enough contact. Yep. Notice it's growing. Voltage real slowly. That's because what it's doing is it's actually leaching the uh, it's leaching the power from my multimeter and storing it in the capacitor. Because so, really, you know, when you put these on the ends here, you're creating a uh, you know a circuit with the uh, leads of the capacitor, and since there's a battery inside the multimeter, that's basically sending uh, sending charge um, to the uh, plate inside the capacitor. So, anyways. Okay, so let's change the 100k. Um, let me just uh, let me turn this guy off just for one sec. Just as a good practice, if I'm going to really be mucking with uh, circuitry, what I don't really want to do is um, get shocked. So we're going to go in there and in there. So now we, are, we have replaced our 100k ohm resistor with a 50k. And assuming I didn't put it in the wrong pins, which that's on the same um, common strip. And that one looks to be in the correct strip for the pin of our switch. So um, now that we've halved our resistance, the charge rate of the capacitor should be twice the speed, I think. I haven't tried this yet. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. So I'm going to put 
this guy back on the capacitor. Okay, and I'm going to push this guy and let's see what happens. Oh yeah, he's faster. Much faster. But notice, let's see, it should start slowing down. There's a special rule about 63% charge. Once it gets to about like six and a half to seven volts, it should, let me change fingers here, it should start slowing down quite a bit. Like that's like the peak of where it, let's see. Oops, oh, got a little worried there. So, yeah, it seems to be kind of gradually slowing down just a little bit because it's supposedly, you know, doing that logarithmic charge deal here where it's going to take longer and longer and longer to approach the voltage of the power source. And it's definitely taking longer you can tell. So yeah, basically right here this uh, this guy has 9 volts in him and he is ever so slowly losing charge. <laughs> um, but very slowly. So yeah, that was uh, confirming what we thought that, uh, so needless to say, like, hey, if this has 9 volts, or just a share under, that means that the voltage drop on this is going to be, like, you know, only, like, 3 or 4 volts, right? So, pretty cool. But the lesson to learn here is current does not flow through a capacitor. And I will have to make sure I remember that. Okay. See you guys next time.